my name is Maggie and I work as a diabetes specialist nurse in the West Hampshire Community Diabetes Service. This video is all about high glucose levels, also known as hypers or hyperglycemia. You will all have different thoughts about what a high glucose level means to you and what glucose level might worry you. Glucose levels above 10, above 15 or higher. Hyper is high, glyce equals glucose, emia is blood. Usual glucose levels in someone without diabetes will stay between about four and eight millimoles per litre. And if the glucose level rises higher than normal, the kidneys will start to excrete glucose in urine, usually at a blood glucose level above 10 millimoles per litre. The higher the blood glucose level, the more glucose and with it fluid will be excreted via the kidneys. Usually the pancreas will release insulin when needed to lower glucose levels after meals and will release stored glucose from liver and muscles when extra glucose is needed, such as overnight and when exercising. When you develop type 1 diabetes, the pancreas stops producing insulin and so you have to give yourself insulin by injection for your meals and as a background insulin once or twice daily or just fast acting insulin via an insulin pump. As your glucose levels rise you may start to feel symptoms of hyperglycemia but at what point you feel symptoms varies from person to person. You may remember how you felt when you were diagnosed with diabetes. Symptoms and signs of hyperglycemia. Passing more urine than usual getting up in the night to pass urine, feeling thirsty, feeling tired and weak, blurred vision, abdominal pain, leg cramps, nausea and vomiting, raised glucose levels, ketones in the urine or blood, fungal infections such as thrush, slow healing wounds, weight loss. Causes of hyperglycemia. Missing a dose of your insulin. Not enough insulin taken, i.e. your ratio is too low or you underestimated your carbohydrate. Stress. Being unwell. Overtreating a hypo. After some forms of intense exercise, such as squash, sprinting and weight training. Certain medications, such as steroids. Injecting into areas of lipohypertrophy, lumpy injection sites. Insulin expired or affected by temperature. Insulin pen not working. How to prevent hyperglycemia. Adjusting your insulin doses proactively will help you to achieve your target glucose levels. Learning to adjust your insulin for your food and lifestyle. Checking your glucose levels regularly. Ask your diabetes team about having a trial of the Freestyle Libre Flash monitoring sensors. Treating and managing hyperglycemia. Using a correction dose will enable you to give an increased dose of your fast acting insulin to reduce a raised glucose level back to target. And we cover using a correction dose in one of our other videos. If you do not have enough insulin, you may be at risk of developing ketoacidosis. So checking for ketones is important when your glucose is raised so that you can take action if you are developing ketones. We cover this subject in our video on managing illness and sick day rules. Ensure you are drinking enough fluid to keep hydrated. If you are feeling unwell, you should get medical advice. For advice on what to do when unwell, please see our video on managing illness and sick day rules. Your HbA1c or Libre Glucose data will help you to review how your insulin treatment is working and whether you are achieving your glucose goals. Having high blood glucose levels regularly is not something you should live with as it can make you feel unwell and increase your risk of ketoacidosis. High glucose levels in the long term can increase your risk of developing diabetes complications. 
If you notice that your blood glucose levels are often high, you may want to contact your diabetes team. They will review your treatment and provide you with advice on how to get your blood glucose levels back within your target range if you do not feel confident to do this yourself. You may feel anxious after getting a high blood glucose reading and worry about high glucose levels. If you're finding it hard to deal with these feelings, you may want to talk to someone about this. Psychology support services will be available in your area, so ask your GP or practice nurse about local psychological support. I normally get really annoyed yeah. because I don't want that number yeah. and it's not something I think, oh, okay, fine, I'll sort. Yeah. It just makes me feel rubbish about everything. Yes. So it's like I failed. Exactly. So I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head. You know, when you get a high blood sugar, you, it's like, oh, you know, I, I hear that a lot. The whole day, the rest of the day is ruined. Whatever yeah. I started off with, good intentions, is ruined. And then the feeling like failure, what have I done wrong, sort of it's all my fault. Mm -hmm. um, and then the extra effort that you have to put in to get it right. I'm not sure if you will be able to. Yeah. You know, and then I think your, your feeling of that it's going to bring on complications. Oh, all those complications that I've been told about. So if you have all of those thoughts going on in your head, they are what we call negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. Those negative thoughts can activate an anxiety response, like a fear response. I mean like a proper fear response, you know, where your heart starts racing. Mm -hmm. You might come out a bit of a sweat or nervousness. So if you're feeling anxious at a high blood sugar and your body is reacting in an anxious way, what people do is switch off and avoid. I think that's what's happening in diabetes is that you get the high sugars, you get negative, uh, really sad and negative thoughts. That brings on a depression or an anxiety feeling. Mm -hmm. You don't want that feeling, so you avoid it. You go yeah. off and say, oh, well, never mind. You know, tomorrow's another day or, and that's happening, if that's happening every day, every day, you know, then obviously you're not gonna look after your diabetes and the thing that you've been fearing starts happening. Mm -hmm. Attending structured type one education can help to increase your confidence to adjust your insulin and manage your diabetes. You can also access diabetes peer support from support groups such as Diabetes UK, Careline and Sugar Buddies. Thank you for watching. This video is part of our Type 1 Structured Education course. For individual advice, please speak to your healthcare team.